Hi, I'm Clement Shermer, and I'm a dual trained endovascular and open supervascular neurosurgeon and would like to go over some basic endovascular coding concepts. As you may be aware of, there has been an evolution of the CPT coding concepts that pertain to supervascular and open and endovascular procedures. We started out with a legacy coding or component coding set that has been or is still found in the craniotomy codes and has been also uh, used in the intracranial embolization space. But for example, for diagnostic angiograms, we have moved on to a bundled code set. And then there's been further movements towards goal-oriented or functional-oriented bundling of the codes that come together when it goes about, for example, carotid angioplasty or stenting as well as thrombectomy or vasospasm treatment. So to reiterate, we've started with components that were built together that describe the placement and the supervision interpretation of the catheter work and moved on to something that is basically looking to describe the gore-oriented or functional procedure as it pertains to what has actually happened or what is supposed to be done, such as a thrombectomy or vasospasm by whatever means necessary. There's been an evolution alongside of that of the concept of a vascular territory. We started out with distinct vessels being considered distinct placements or distinct other entities where placing a catheter would be described in separate codes and the work was added up to all the work describing a procedure that is done in a single territory as the same. And there's only three distinct vascular territories that are recognized in the CPT world, which is the right and the left carotid or anterior territory, as well as the posterior territory or the vertebral basilar territory. This is important as there are two vertebral arteries that only lead to one territory involved. So the work done in both of these arteries may be described as the same territory. To make some specific examples, a diagnostic cerebral angiogram starts as always with defining the diagnosis. So in this example of a patient that presented with the TIA but was found to have an unrelated possible intercommunicating artery aneurysm, the diagnosis is I67.1 pertaining to the ICD-10 diagnosis of an unruptured tubular artery aneurysm. Medicare considers a prior study to be a catheter-based study or a CTA. However, when it comes to this indication here, it may be important to describe why a prior study such as a CTA is not adequate to make a diagnosis and requires the additional work of going through a catheter-based angiogram. There's some potential language you can use, uh, such as pointing out that the prior study is inadequate or that there's further information that is required to get to the diagnosis. The procedure is pretty standard. Going through this in brief detail, you start with access. Note that radial access may require ultrasound guidance, which if the pictures from the ultrasound are separately stored on the PAC system and documented, may be eligible for a ultrasound assisted CPT code, uh, but you should probably check uh, with your local environment about how to make that happen. It is not enough to just simply say that you use the ultrasound to qualify for this code. You then place the sheath, you select the arteries and perform the angiographic runs. In this case, we'll talk about the right vertebral artery, the right common artery, the right internal carotid artery, doing a rotational angiogram and a 3D reconstruction on a different or separate computer, the left common carotid artery, the left cerebral internal carotid artery, 
formed from the common carotid artery secondary to a plaque that you don't want to cross. And the left vertebral artery performed from a subclavian artery because of tortuosity. And then using the closure advice, if applicable, maybe a last step here. The latest generation of coding is based on the most distal vessel categorized and includes both the access to sheath placement and all the catheter work done to reach that destination and the closure. So in other words, passing through a more proximal vessel, even when doing an angiographic run, is superseded by the most distal destination that the catheter is looking at and placed in. So to make this clear, for example, CPT code 36222, is placement in the common carotid artery and imaging of the neck only. As you can see here, the catheter is placed at the bottom of the screen and only the neck uh, of the internal carotid artery is imaged. And the cutoff here is roughly the petrous or cavernous carotid artery, but the intracranial space is not actually imaged here. Now, there are two codes that allow for interpretation and imaging of the intracranial internal carotid artery, 36223 and 36224. The difference is the placement of the catheter. If the catheter is actually placed into the internal carotid artery, then we use 36224. If the catheter stays in the common carotid artery, then 36223 is the appropriate code. If we perform a 3D rotation and sending that to a different workstation, then 36 then 37736 is the appropriate code. There's a different code that pertains to sending it to the same workstation, which is typically not how modern angiographic computer systems are set up but you may again check with your local environment which one of those two codes apply. If you catheterize specifically or selectively the external carotid artery, then the add-on code 36227 may be appropriate. This can be added on once per side, and it does not matter how many times or which sub-branches of the external carotid artery are catheterized catheterized. To go through this entire example, we have the right subclavian artery, the right vertebral artery specifically or superselectively, the left common carotid artery, the left internal carotid artery, 3D rotation, left vertebral artery, and code this out as follows. The right and left modifiers you can see here are HICPIX modifiers. Some other carriers and some other payers may require a different way of ordering these. This is done here for convenience sake to make this more transparent, but you may have to check with the coding compliance team or your coders as to how to actually write this down appropriately for your specific environment. Thank you.